Uh, we've got Alexandra Harrison with us now, a uh, Young Hi. Voices UK contributor, to look through some of this morning's top stories. Alexandra, good morning. Good morning. Hello. So we want to just continue reflecting a little on this uh, uh, fallout, the race review, um, anger over lots of comments in this landmark review that we've just been reflecting on uh, with Charlotte. And I just wonder how you feel the government should now handle this. Should it should it should it stand by this review? Should it or should it take a sort of softer approach as the criticism, frankly, rolls on and on? Some of the uh, comments definitely need to be addressed. Um, there, it was described as culturally deaf by quite a few people, and I don't think that's completely unjustified. I think one aspect that the government does need to address is describing the slave, uh, slave trade narrative as more than a story of profit and suffering. Um, and it's quite difficult to, to sell it as a kind of self-development project. It was genuinely a point of suffering for many people and something that quite shocking. Absolutely. I think shocking is exactly the word. I think, you know, in terms of the criticism, it's coming from all quarters, really. And I just wonder how you think we, we go from here. You know, we've had report after report in the last few years suggesting there is institutional racism in parts of the UK. There are serious issues related to race that need addressed. And then we have this report that, 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 that apparently seems to be trying to undo all of that, that previous evidence and people's own experiences that they've they've spoken of. So I just wonder what the way forward is here. Absolutely. I mean, I think there are some aspects of the report, um, sort of policy recommendations that can be utilised. Um, one uh, was to introduce body cameras for stop and searches. Um, it could be seen as controversial because regulation around them isn't um, very strong at the moment, but it definitely could be used to show how the police are treating perhaps different ethnic minorities when they are stop and searching. There was also um, a suggestion to set up an independent, uh, independent body to tackle health disparities, uh, another aspect that ethnic minorities do struggle with. Mm. I think those are good starting points. To what extent does it sort of suggest that the government is complacent on the issue of racism? I think you can definitely argue that this suggests complacency within the government. A lot of what the report said was that it's not to say that Britain isn't racist, it's to say that it's not institutionally racist, which means that the government has a lot less to do. Yeah, well, and that's interesting. So is it kind of an, an absolving of responsibility in some ways, do you think, or an attempt at that, at least? I think some people definitely could see it that way. It wasn't saying that uh, Britain wasn't racist. It was saying the government doesn't have to do much, mm. which which could say that they're not taking enough responsibility for what is a large problem. Yeah, interesting. Well, that criticism uh, abounds, it has to be said, in the papers this morning and online as well. Uh, just on some other stories then, Alexandra. So the front page of the Daily Telegraph, uh, the Labour leader, Keir, Sir Keir Starmer, uh, vaccine passports are un-British. Uh, do you agree? <laughs> um, I, I'm not sure they're necessarily un-British. I do think it's a very thorny area and something that the government needs to take very seriously. It's definitely something that I think would be bad news for pubs in some respects, just because I think a large uh, part of their clientele, young people, will not be able to, to go for a while. However, there's definitely a public appetite for vaccine, uh, vaccine passports. Uh, one of the things here is that uh, Sir Keir Starmer's faced criticism, hasn't he, for, for really not being strong on any issue, frankly, of late, uh, or indeed since he took over as leader. Uh, we've seen that throughout the pandemic, and perhaps there are political gains to be made from sort of going along with the government or whatever during a time of crisis. But even on this issue, the Daily Telegraph notes, Sir Keir stressed that he wanted to find a cross-party consensus and would only decide the party's stance um, once he had uh, studied detailed proposals. So... Uh, you know, he, he's kind of making clear that he's against the idea of pubs deciding, but actually Sir Keir's sort of still sitting on the fence, really, on this issue as well. Given his uh, past stance taking, it's not surprising that he is still sitting on the fence. What he does bring to light, however, and as the opposition should, is that this is a very difficult issue. This is one that will massively affect pubs who have already been damaged by the pandemic. Mm, yeah, interesting. And I think, you know, he's pretty sort of focusing there on, on some of this as well about uh, on passports for international travel, uh, he's, which he says were inevitable uh, and said the focus of the government should now be on maximising the vaccine uh, rollout. Um, so interesting thoughts from Sir Keir Starmer. Um, but as you say, you know, as we kind of are alluding to, there is um, there is some, some, some suggestions that the public largely are, are OK with the idea of vaccine passports. That's always interesting to consider as well. Um, and just one other story as well uh, to mention here. So the higher 
Higher Education Policy Institute uh, has published a report uh, that suggests that almost two-thirds of university students in the UK say their mental health is worse because of the COVID pandemic, which perhaps isn't overly surprising, but clearly it gives a basis then for um, the Higher Education Policy Institute to really stress to the government that ministers have to really take this seriously as restrictions ease and, and look after students. And I'm, I'm just wondering what that, what that care would look like. What is it that students need to try to help and assist with what is, you know, sounding more and more like a mental health crisis? Yeah, there are two problems, I think, that students are facing at the moment. There are social issues and there are educational ones. First off, it's been really difficult, especially for people in accommodation to either make friends or just have that kind of support that they will need for their mental health um, when they reach out to someone. Secondly is the educational aspect, which the government can definitely do more on and make a more immediate impact with. I think it's important that we do go back to in-person teaching where possible after Easter. Um, many people have struggled with Zoom lectures and uh, seminars with shoddy Wi-Fi. Um, that's a good start for the government. Mm, really interesting. Alexandra, thank you very much. Thanks for joining us this morning. Alexandra Harrison, Young Voices UK contributor.